Hey there. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, I hope you can hear me. Hope you can uh, see me. Uh, welcome to the uh, next in the uh, Admiral's trading webinar series. And uh, today we're going to be talking about day trade in the US uh, indices. Hi, Jessica. Nice to see you here. <clears throat> Fascinating uh, subject and one we could talk about for days because there's always something interesting going on about it. But uh, if you're joining us for the first time, listen, great to have you here in the, uh, the room or if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, uh, fantastic to have you uh, with us joining us. Um, as always, you know, if you're, uh, if you're finding these uh, sessions useful from myself and my colleagues, Jens and Marcus, well then you'll know, be sure to uh, subscribe, okay, to the uh, Admiral's YouTube uh, channel. Uh, give us a like if you uh, like the stuff or even if you do you know if you don't we, we don't mind the feedback okay we appreciate all the feedback hello Anna welcome to see you here <clears throat> and if you've got any comments or questions please either put them in the uh, the, the sort of chat box here today if you're with me today or if you're watching this later on uh, demand, then be sure to uh, just put some comments in there. You'll find that we're very happy to uh, to take the uh, kind of questions and the feedback. Uh, and also, if you have thoughts about topics you'd like to see us uh, cover in the future, don't be uh, don't be shy to put them in there. We always uh, enjoy that kind of level of uh, feedback and interaction. <clears throat> so, as I said, great to have you all here with us uh, today for an interesting subject on uh, what is a uh, an interesting afternoon, it's, uh, which will become a bit more relevant in a uh, in a few slides uh, uh, time. Um, so uh, I appreciate, as always, we have a, a wide range of experience who join us for our sessions, you know, for people who, you know, you know, completely at the start of their trading journey, to people who've been trading for maybe two years, two decades, okay, you're all very welcome, okay, it's absolutely uh, um, fantastic to have you here, and, uh, you know, we'll, you'll just bear with us, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the slides and I'll go through uh, slides I've got on day trading US indices, and then if there is time at the end, okay, then uh, we'll look to switch across to, to live market. So yeah, be sure to stay with us. So just bear with us a second. Let's just bring up these slides, okay? And there we go. Well, as I said, we've got plenty to uh, plenty to talk about as uh, as always, okay? So there we go. So I said, you know, hopefully you can still uh, hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully you can still uh, uh, see me, okay? Hope you can uh, see the slides. That always makes for a good start, doesn't it, people? Um, especially when you're trying to do one of these uh, um, webinars. And it says it's all good. That's great. Thanks. So you know, we're going to talk about trading U.S. indices on an intraday basis. Um, you know, and that is, uh, it, well, you know, it's fascinating, all right? It's absolutely fascinating. But um, like anything, if you're going to trade intraday basis, you have to be prepared, okay? You have to be prepared, you have to be educated. And that's the basis for these particular sessions. And so we're going to talk about, well, you know, how can we access these fascinating markets? What is it that we need to be aware of um, when we're going to uh, sort of sit down to trade these uh, um, particular markets? Mopra says everything's all good. That's great. Nice to see you back here again. So, um, uh, as always, uh, if you are uh, new to, to these sessions, uh, Admiral Markets has become Admirals as part of their 20th anniversary rebranding. So just you might just notice different uh, names or colours, but it makes no difference to you if you're actually trading with uh, Admirals at the moment. And, uh, you know, as we uh, as we said, you know, this is uh, Admirals, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with a wide range of uh, instruments for you to trade. And they have global presence with local support. They're licensed and regulated across a wide range of uh, regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most uh, popular trading products uh, and allowing you the opportunity to engage with markets using both MT4, MT5 uh, and also the Admirals Supreme Edition. So if you have any questions about Admirals, get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. And, you know, for uh, more of a more, you know, sort of a following by uh, Admirals Global, we'll do so follow us on uh, Instagram. OK, for those uh, social media savvy amongst us. OK, Admirals, at Admirals Global on Instagram, please uh, be sure to uh, follow us. OK, just what you'll see is, you know, lots of uh, great content and also be reminders of all the, the kind of vast amount of resources that Admirals provide for their uh, clients uh, and also reminders of uh, particular sessions like these that are coming up. So be sure to give us a follow on Instagram. So, but, you know, what we're going to talk about on our agenda today, all right? So uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, introducing trading US indices on an intraday basis. Uh, and we're going to talk about a couple of identifying good trading setups, okay? You know, what uh, what will I look for? How would I uh, look to engage with those markets? Uh, also, a little bit of a chat about, you know, how correlations can help you, all right? They can help you identify good trading environments uh, and also act as maybe a, as a bit of a bulwark, as a little bit of a uh, decision filter in terms of whether you should should engage or not on that particular day. And yeah, talk about a couple of simple tactics to, to help you build a trading plan. 
Um, as I said, I always know there's a wide range of people here in the room, uh, and it would help me to, to know what, if any, experience you have had trading uh, in the US indices on an intraday uh, basis. Is it something that um, is it something that you do regularly? Is it something you have uh, considered, but, you know, just a little, maybe a little bit nervous or a little apprehensive about it? Maybe it's something you've never, you know, you're new to trading and don't know anything about it. It'd be great if you could just uh, give us a, uh, give us a, you know, a little point in the, uh, in the chat box and stuff. Okay. Just to let me know, because that helps me, you know, sort of identify, you know, what kind of, what level, you know, we have here with us today. So I can help you as much as, uh, as, as possible. <clears throat> and if you have experience of trading US indices, you know, it's always great to hear, you know, what has been your own experience? What have you know, what have you found? Okay, what has worked for you? What have you found challenging? What have your, your particular highlights? Okay, because I think it's always fantastic to be able to, to share these elements, okay, and, and, and chat about them with that. So um, Vera says, don't know much about uh, about it, would like to trade indices. Well, um, that's what these sessions are for, Vera, uh, and you're very welcome. All right, these sessions are here to help give you a little bit of an educated introduction, okay, into trading intraday and uh, US indices because, you know, they can be challenging, all right, you know, let's, let's you know, let's not, um, you know, I'm not going to sort of, uh, I'm not going to gild a lily in that sense. They can be challenging if you're not educated. If you don't know what you're doing, okay, things can happen very fast. So, you know, hopefully this session today will give you a little bit of a guided, educated introduction to them so that you're in a, in a coming from a position of being able to engage with them in a, from a, from a you know, bit of a place of confidence. Um, and if you don't know me, my name's uh, Paul. I've uh, traded for many years, okay. You know, I've traded for hedge funds, for high net worth individuals, okay. Uh, my own kind of trading, my primarily focuses on FX indices, commodities. And uh, for longer term trading, I'm a bit of a trend trader uh, and intraday trading, I'm more of a reversal trader and a medium reversion trader. That's the kind of, a, that's my particular style that, uh, that, uh, that, you know, that we've been working on. So, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, how to intraday trade US indices. As the slide says there, ladies and gentlemen, trading US indices on an intraday basis is, a, is an attractive proposition to many traders. And it is okay. Um, you know the volatility, the liquidity, and the big moves in indices. Um, you know can be fascinating to new traders, and that is absolutely true. Okay. Uh, however, like we've shared in previous webinars in, in the intraday trading FX, it, it's important to be thoroughly prepared for the endeavor. And today we'll provide a simple introduction to trading U.S. indices on an intraday basis, so you're prepared for what awaits. And and that is true. And it's a little bit like just I said a couple of minutes ago. All right, it's you know it's about being educated, it's about being prepared, it's about knowing what you need to do. Okay, it's about knowing you know what you're uh, up against, it's about knowing what you're actually particularly trading, what you, you know how you're going to particularly trade in those markets. All of that kind of what we'll touch on here. Okay, and as I said, hopefully that will uh, a maybe remove a little bit of stigma. Maybe it'll just kind of clear the fog for you. Maybe it'll just give you a little bit of confidence to be able to to start looking at it. Uh, and we'll look at you know how can you how can you set up your uh, platform to basically help guide you with that. And uh, as I said. I'm going to share some of my own uh, uh, little sort of tips and tactics and in terms of how I look to, to actually to, to, to do that myself. So, um, anyway, and this is personal experience here. I'm going to talk about with them when I come to this slide, right? This is very much about my own experience over the years is that um, what I have found is that there are, there are times of the year when you can perhaps focus on one asset class more so than the others, okay? Uh, and, and that can be whether you're operating as a swing trader, it can be as you're operating an intraday trader. You know, there will be times of the year when, you know, FX is more interesting than the equities or indices would be more interesting, or, you know, maybe even fixed income is, is where the action's at, or not surprisingly, there will be, you know, there'll be action in the sort of the crypto space. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I could give you some a very clear, simple rule as in, I don't know, you know, April and June, always focus on FX, something simple. If I if I'm honest, I, I can't. Okay. What will happen is you you will notice that as you engage in markets, you'll build up experience and you'll start to realize, okay, when things like volatility starts to die, okay. And things like things like indicators like average true ranges can help, okay, when they start collapsing massively. All right, okay, then that'll give you an indication that you know the market's going quiet. And and yes, there are periods of the year, okay, when markets are, let's say, more volatile than others, you know, normally we're, we're entering into the kind of the summer lull now, normally from about mid-July to sort of early September. Generally, things would normally go a little bit quieter because lots of people are on holidays. But for the last 18 months, we live in a rather different world, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? So, you know, whether that will happen, 
his moot point last year. It didn't. Why? Because everyone was stuck at home. So what were they going to do? They were going to trade markets because they couldn't go away on holiday. Will that be the same this summer? The truth is, I don't know. OK, we will find out over the next few weeks. But what you will find is that you know there will be periods generally there'll be periods of the year when in fact you know invariably it, it's you know the the sort of the trading let's call it the trading action is more suited to one or particular one or two particular asset um, classes and as i say so, sometimes that will be very clear to you okay sometimes that will be clear to you other times not so much all right but you know with that in mind what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at what the options with the indices and then in particular U.S. indices, and furthermore, you know, in terms of a, uh, in terms of the sort of intraday, uh, intraday trade. So, um, before we, before we, you know, sort of focus on, let's say, the specific asset classes, you know, I always put in these couple of slides whenever we're talking about intraday trading, because remember what I said, it's about being educated, it's been about being prepared, right? Lots of people stumble into intraday trading okay fast moving markets without any real preparation or education and then wonder why they find it particularly uh challenging all right a, a lot of this is you know getting yourself prepared properly all right and as it says their price action trading plan should be simple and clear especially when intraday trading you know since things are going to happen very fast things can change very fast okay you know a, a couple of years ago all right you know you could be trading your synthesis and then uh, Mr. Trump would come out, uh, you know, and tweet something, and markets could completely flip 180 degrees based upon that kind of comment. <clears throat> we don't live in necessarily that kind of same world at the moment. Although some people might say, you know, when Elon Musk puts out a tweet, that can have the kind of the, the same uh, impact or a similar impact, certainly within the crypto space. But as I said, things can actually happen quick, and so you have to be prepared, right? You do have to be prepared. You have to be ready for what's going to come at you because things will, things will. Have. Anil says, "I miss that dude." Well, um, you know, you're, uh, you know, as a as a trader, yeah, I'd, I would say absolutely, absolutely, because you know there was uh, there was never a dull moment in markets. Okay, that's that's what we can all agree on, regardless of anything else. Um, <clears throat> so. What do I say is, you know, you know, and I say this all the time, really, whenever, you know, if you've been joining me here for the last 18 months or so, you know, we've always said exactly the same. Right? I've always been very consistent, all right, in terms of, you know, you should have a very simple plan, a little routine, okay, to become habits, to become good behaviours, all right, regardless, right, if you're going to trade US indices, first thing you should be doing is buying you know, identifying significant levels on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts, all right? Now, some might say, you know, that's a little bit hard at the moment, Paul, because we're into, in many ways, we're into uncharted territory, we're at all-time highs. That's very true, but they should still be there, okay? Historically, aren't they? You should still be writing them because <clears throat> we don't want to buy into resistance, where resistance may be different in a little bit at the moment, but equally, you don't want to be selling into support, all right? What we want to be doing is see how price reacts at those levels. So in this particular case, you know, we're in the way, we're, the way we are in the world at the moment, where we're pushing to all-time highs, we're looking at kind of big round numbers, big round numbers that become psychological numbers, and maybe we'll have a little look at that uh, at the charts later. If you're going to, uh, you know, things are going to happen fast, but still, all right, still, okay, you, you don't enter a trade, okay, until the candle has complete, all right, don't enter a trade until the candle is complete, and you normally enter, to begin with, on the trade of a break of that candle, okay, that particular trigger candle that you may particularly look for. Stop loss, okay, you never trade without stop loss, stop loss should always be at least the other side of the candle, or if, you know, at a, at a suitable technical level. You never risk more than 1% risk for trading. And, and actually, I'd be saying, you know, for intraday trading, you might even want to sort of, you know, reel that in a little bit to half percent, quarter percent, depending upon your account size. All right. And, and equally, you know, you, you're looking for targets. OK, in an ideal world, two to one is a, is, is a really good move. OK, on intraday. Now, sometimes you'll get a great run. Fantastic. I'm very pleased for you. But, <clears throat> you know, what? What you know you're going to have to get in, okay, is you don't want to be getting into a habit where you might be risking 10, 15, 20 handles to make two, three, four handles of profit, okay? You know, it's a wrong asymmetric um, um, risk to reward, okay? And it's very easy for traders to do that, but actually it's not the way we want to, to, to do that, okay? Uh, and uh, what I talk about, uh, um, you know, now what probably you have is what I mean by rinse and repeat is. You know what you'll have heard me before is you know at the end of your trading day make sure you keep good trading records okay make sure you keep records take screenshots of your trades so that you're able to review those trades okay and the good ones learn from them and the bad ones learn from them okay you know and then be able to rinse and repeat session after session and that's what we're saying i say you know just have these little simple plans that you can get into so it almost becomes an automatic response for you 
Uh, and, uh, you know, let's set some rules and expectations. And I said, I always put these two slides in and I never apologize for them because, you know, it's, you know, regardless how long you've been trading, you always, it's always good to be reminded, okay, of these kind of rules and expectations. Risk management is always absolutely key, okay? Make sure you do it and make sure you honor it. Furthermore, know what news is coming out for that particular session, right? There's no excuse, okay? There's no excuse these days not to know what news, formal news is coming out, okay? Um, you know, Admirals itself on the actual website has a, a calendar which you can tack into, right? Which will give you the, the updated data. If you're not using that, there are plenty of economic calendars out there. So there's no excuse not to know, right? That you do not want to step in front of a freight train, okay? Especially when you're intraday trading because that will just lead you to all manner of uh, pain. What I also talk about is resist the temptation to trade out of session. And what does that mean? Well, you know, I'm here trading this in Europe, okay? I'm in the UK and trading Europe. So for me, okay, you know, New York, you know, New York is about five hours behind me, all right? So, so invariably what we're looking at, you know, so when they're looking to open at, you know, 8.30, 9.30 in the morning, okay? You know, I'm looking here, that's kind of like 1.30 in the afternoon. Okay, it might be 2.30, okay? Uh, you know, it could be 2.30 in, the, in Europe, okay? Depending upon where you are, I appreciate we have a global audience here. But, you know, as a rule, what I suggest is if you're going to intraday trade, you intraday trade U.S. sessions, uh, U.S. indices during the U.S. session. Now, with the advent of electronic markets and the, let's say the proliferation of U.S. indices, I know people do trade U.S. markets outside, <coughs> excuse me, outside of, of US, uh, the U.S. session. But if you're here, if you're new, just you know, keep it simple, okay? Don't you don't try and need to be a, a smart aleck, all right? As we would say here in the UK, it, it's a case of you know, understand when the US session is opening based upon you know your own where you are in the world. Remember that you kind of lots of uh, good news will come out at uh, about eight thirty, okay, in the morning US time, and just be ready for that wherever you may be, uh, but and, and trade the US session within those US the US time, okay? Don't be tempted to trade out of it on an intraday basis. It might sound really simple, but ensure you have a good internet connection, okay? And if not, you've got to, you know, make sure you've got a, uh, a backup. Intraday trading, okay? I mean, it's better than it used to be, all right? You know, years ago when I started trying to, you know, intraday trade on a, on a, uh, on a you know, on a, on a single internet connection, okay, was challenging. We're in a much better place these days now, but just, just ensure you've got a good internet connection and also ensure you are rested and prepared for the session as well, all right? You know, if you've... Uh, if you've been up late last night, okay, you've been partying and then having a great time, that's not the best time to be setting down, okay, to sort of sit and trade because things, as I said, things are happening fast, things are moving quickly. You need to be, you know, you need to be in your best place. And if you're not, you just, you you open the door to making mistakes, okay? And there's nothing worse than, than actually trading poorly and knowing you didn't, you, you shouldn't have been trading anyway because maybe you're tired, maybe you're hungover, maybe you spent your evening arguing with your partner, you know, whatever, okay, maybe you were up, you know, looking after your newborn baby, whatever it might have been, okay, so just make sure you're rested and prepared for the session, right, you've still got, you know, 20 sessions a month, all right, 20, 21, 22, depending on the, which month it is, okay, you know, if you miss one or two sessions because you're not rested, all right, it's okay, all right, Markets aren't going anywhere. Markets were here before you and I were born. They'll be here long after we leave this mortal coil. All right, you know. So you know, it's it's better that you do it in a good space rather than just try to hammer and attack the market every day. So, uh, when it comes to trading indices on uh, on uh, sort of an intraday basis, what I generally find is that. Um, there's kind of indices traders will usually focus on two specific sessions. So uh, they'll normally focus on you know, trading the euro indices in the US morning, in the morning on uh, European timings, and then US indices in the afternoon. So, you know, I know many traders, okay, many of uh, you know, my clients, many traders that uh, I work with, many professional traders, I know, you know, they, they will trade the DAX in the morning, and then they will trade the Dow and the SP in the afternoon if they, let's say, if they're European based. But today we're going to focus on uh, US indices. So, um, you know, there are European indices. And if you go into the uh, Admiral's webinar archive, you'll find, you know, uh, videos on how to intraday trade European indices. And you can see there that uh, actually, you know, Admiral's, you know, you're looking at the DAX 30, which is the German index, the FTSE 100, which is the UK, CAC 40 is the French, the MIB 40 is the Italian, IBEX 35 is the Spanish, and Stocks 50 is like the Euro, it's like the overall European stock market. It kind of doesn't move that differently from the DAX. I, I personally don't think, but other other people may, uh, other me, people may sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, comment differently on that. So, but you know, we're here today 
to look at US indices, all right? So, you know, for, for those of you who are completely new, right, what we're generally looking at, you know, is, is four US indices. You've got the Dow 30, okay, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2000. Uh, for admirals, admirals you offer the, the, the sort of the front three, so they will offer then you know, the kind of the, the Dow 30, the NASDAQ 100, the sort of text, effectively the kind of a tax stock index and the S&P 500, which is the 500 and biggest, uh, biggest um, businesses by market capitalization within the US. So, you know, what I do is, you know, I have my MetaTrader set up, okay, for intraday trade indices, which we'll look at. Uh, so my chart is just effectively, you know, my, uh, my kind of screen is just set up with four charts there, okay? So I'll have, you can probably see it there. I've got the Dow Jones in the top left, I've got the S&P 500 in the uh, top right and the NASDAQ in the, the uh, in the bottom left. Uh, and in the bottom right, I actually have a uh, treasury notes there. OK, and um, that's a bit outside the remit of today's um, session. Um, I just have them because I'm just of interest to see, you know, if there's big news and market shift and swing. Um, you know, I want to see where that swing is particularly going. Um, but that bottom right, you know, I actually have quite a few charts that I can put in there. So I will have a chart of the, uh, the dollar index. I'll also have a chart of um, uh, I'll have a chart of gold as well and oil because sometimes if there's a big shift happening, I want to be able to see how it is across across a you know a, a collection of a collection of markets. But generally, what we're looking at is Dow 30, S and P 500, and Nasdaq 100. That's what's offered on the Adams platform. And um, you know what, what I can say is that um, um, some people, you know, I find some people like to trade all three of those and are very comfortable and very happy to do that. Um, some people specific, you know, specifically focus on one of them, and that in itself is okay because, you know, I, you know, I can teach and educate and give you an educated introduction. But, but the reality is, you know, when you're sat there on your own trading, you have to work with what's, you know, well, what works best for you. I, you know, I know, I know some people who, I know some people who will trade like sixty or seventy instruments at one time. Even I don't really understand how they do that. Okay, that's just far, far too much. Okay, far too much. For, you know, I don't particularly think that's a smart way to do it. But they do well at it. So you know, who am I to judge? Equally, I know you know one or two traders who literally trade about you know two instruments. Okay, and that's that is all they trade, and they focus really, really well on that. There is no right or wrong. There's only what's right for you as a trader. And part of as part of the reason I, I get people to you know, to, to keep good records is because as you keep good records, you will start to see trends and patterns in your own trading, right? And part of that is, is as you do that, you will be able to narrow down. Maybe you might find that you actually just, you know, you just, you want to trade DAX in the morning, Dow in the afternoon, and that might be, that might be happily you. Maybe you want to trade all of the year indices, okay? You know, across the, the whole spectrum, you know, doing the European ones in the morning, the American the afternoon, maybe the Asian ones in the evening, depending upon where you are in the world. If that is what works for you, based upon the results that you're achieving, then, then that is absolutely fine. As long as you keep doing those things, I talked a couple of slides about, okay, making sure you're managing risk, making sure that you know where you know, the significant levels of support are, making sure you know what kind of significant news is coming out for that upcoming session and that you know, you're managing risk in terms of your position sizing is only, is only particularly uh, small and that you're you know, keeping good records and then reviewing them and then rinsing and repeating that, okay? That's all, that is all good. Um, best practice okay and that's good best practice for a trader doesn't and it doesn't actually really um doesn't really matter you know what to uh what to do that so um vera's asked uh, i would like to get some tips how you can color the different uh zones on your charts a uh, good question it's almost set me up just bear with us if you don't mind Vera. i'm going to come on to that in a in a moment or two just to give you just as an, an indication of how my charts are sort of set up as we go to it okay so uh, that's what um, that's what we'll do but uh, thanks for the question all right it, um you know uh, yeah, i appreciate that because you know i do this every day okay in terms of trading that so of course i'm used to it but i appreciate if you're new you know you you know you're trying to understand and grasp um so please you know questions are absolutely fine by me so you know if we're going to trade indices you know what we want to do is well, well what can be our edge you know if you haven't got an edge well then you know you're, you're pretty pointless okay trying to trade it because you're just gonna you're gonna struggle this is how I define one of my edges, okay? And, and when it comes to, especially intraday trading, you can actually have a few edges. You know, you can have an edge in, you know, statistical edge, okay, in terms of, you know, you know your trading or the, 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 the tactic that you're following. Um, you can have a behavioral edge, okay? A behavioral edge, namely, maybe, you know, might be your patience, uh, you know, your ability to, to uh, analyze that particular market, your ability to effectively position size an instrument and, and disciplinedly trade that, you know, every single day, okay? So you can have 
edges can be a few different things, but you need to know what your edges are, okay? And so you have to think, well, what can be our edge? And, and this is my, once again, this is my personal view, all right? There'll be people who will differ in this, and that's fine, because that's what makes a market. My particular view is that, you know, with the increase of algos, what we often see is that the indices, the American indices, are, are increasingly correlated, okay? They, they will very often move in step. I don't see any point in fighting that, okay? I don't see any point in fighting that. What actually, what I want to do is I want to use that behavior to our own benefit, okay? So when I see those, overall, those four US indices on an intraday basis all moving in unison, that actually, that actually is 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 my preferred trading environment. Other people would be different. Other people want them doing all sorts of different things. I personally am just thinking, I'm not going to fight the algos. The algos are in place. I just want to basically surf with those algos. I want to use that information to mine. I don't want to be fighting them. Okay. And I, but I say that's my personal trading experience. Other people may differ. What we can also do is you know, uh, in terms of my trading, you know, I'm looking to use existing tool sets. All right. So, um, you know, you will find in the webinar archive, I've done quite a few sessions on uh, previous highs and lows. Okay. Their, their relevance, looking at where the previous day's highs and lows, where the previous week's highs and lows, uh, even the previous month, maybe even the previous year, depending upon where, where the actual particular market is. Seeing how markets react to that can be very useful. Okay. I kind of particularly like that. Um, I also like to sort of with that, okay, you know, trade personally kind of double tops and bottoms around that, okay. <clears throat> so I'm looking to do that, you know, I'm looking to do that on on sort of, you know, from the hourly chart down, okay. So you've got the 30 minute, 15, five and one minute. Um, I, I am happy to trade down on the five minute and the one minute charts on an intraday basis. Um, my suggestion is that uh, my suggestion is that you is that you don't okay to begin with and stuff. So apologize i'm clearly a popular um the uh, and that's my uh, and that's the uh, um the uh my particular view my view would be to start with don't try to trade down on the five minute and the one minute charts to begin with by all means watch them see how markets react but to begin with you know kind of on the 15 and 30 minute charts to begin with there will be enough opportunities okay and things will happen <clears throat> they will still happen at pace but they will happen much um much slower than you know kind of on the one minute one minute chart okay so you can uh, you can work on that uh, and also price action setups and combinations okay so you know um, once again there's quite a few videos in the webinar archive you can find that will be around that so uh, on trading things like uh, pin bars okay inside bars outside bars uh, uh, evening star formations okay uh, key reversals there are plenty of webinars in the archive that can go into those in particular depth and detail and when they when they actually combine you know when you might actually see you know a you know a pin bar with a an inside bar okay at a previous high or low that's where you have a confluence okay and confluence is a is a useful word okay when we're a, trading generally but certainly when we're trading an intraday basis okay because things can happen things can change and so when i get a confluence of events happening so when i might get a you know a double top okay at yesterday's previous high okay that also includes a, a you know a, a bearish engulfing candle well then you know i've got three things that have all come together at one particular time and place that gives me a confidence and that's when i'm looking to sort of take my um, take my particular trade position off so what I thought is, uh, you know, here's just here's just one example with the uh, with the Russell in place, just to give some some sort of uh, um, uh, you know just some, some scope. Okay, <clears throat> remember what I was saying is that um, you know when when the let's call it when the algos are in step, okay, and the those markets are in step, that kind of pleases me more because you know, it gives me confirmation, all right, gives me confirmation, gives me confluence, and uh, in this particular case. Let me bring up the old drawing to me there. Just bear with us here. Okay, so hopefully that's... Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, super. So in this particular case, what I want you to see is, is just to is to just very quickly um, uh, just identify what actually happened. In this particular case here, and that should be the... Uh, that should be what we had here. Um, what I had here is this is the uh, this is the, the the sort of the Dow. This was the the Nasdaq. This was the Russell. Uh, okay, and this was the S and P five hundred. Uh, and what we had here, what a particular okay, and then you know these are just fifteen minute charts. Okay, and what I wanted to see was uh, invariably what we had to begin with was we started here. The the S and P five hundred actually what did it do? Well, it actually you know it rejected this 
blue line, which is the kind of you know, resistance line, all right? But just, as I say, just look at the correlation. You know, the, the kind of move was being driven by the S&P 500, but you can see the price action there on the, on the Russell, on the Dow, and on the NASDAQ was all pretty much the same, wasn't it, okay? You know, that's telling me that, you know, there, there's a real fine correlation there. The algos are, uh, are running this, okay? And so that gives, you know, that gives me a lot of confidence to be able to, you know, to basically to short off that, okay? Because, you know, as I said, intraday trading, I'm normally a, a mean reversion trader. You know, as, as price gets extended, I'm looking to trade it back into the range, okay? So to be able to short those kind of pin bars off the off the uh, resistance line uh, and trade it back in down to the, uh, into the sort of, towards the sort of mean value, back into the, towards the, uh, towards the range. Uh, and then what we see is, you know, uh, you know, a, a couple of hours later is, is here. Let's just clear some of these drawing tools is here on the Dow is that, you know, this is a resistance level on the Dow, okay, that I've drawn in. And we can see price comes up to it. And what does it do? It, you know, it puts in quite a few rejection candles there, okay, off that uh, resistance, uh, level of resistance, you know, before it starts to fall away. But, you know, you can see it does it on the uh, on the Russell, okay, also on the, the NASDAQ and also on the S&P 500. And so you can see, hopefully, how they're correlated there, okay? They're, they're, they're pretty much moving in unison. That, as I said, that is what gives me confidence. There'll be other people who, who, who would trade differently that, that's fine. You know, do what you want. Okay, this is what I like to see. This is where I want to be. You know, that's me. That is the market communicating to me that the algos are running, and that you know I don't want to fight them. I just want to work with them. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm not trying to be a rock star. I'm not trying to be a superstar. I'm not trying to impose my will upon the market in terms of you know, in terms of oh, you know, the market will do this. The market is always communicating to you. The market, it's it's your job to get in step with what the market's trying to tell you. Okay. And when I see that, I'm happy to sort of say, bang, you know, we're going short again. Okay, here. And you know, we can see on the Dow there, price did, you know, for the next couple of hours, it drifted lower as well. So, you know, that, that's what I said. I'm talking about using the correlation, don't fight the market, okay? Let let it communicate it to you, let it tell you what it, you know, where it wants to go. Um, you know, and, and this is kind of, you know, here we go. This is just, this is the hourly chart here. Okay. So it's a, uh, um, uh, just trying to understand that hopefully once again, you can see the hourly chart, okay. The Dow, the NASDAQ, the SP, they were all in kind of unison, all moving up particularly uh, uh, nicely. Okay. Uh, before they, they, they rolled over and fell away, didn't they? They rolled over and fell away. Okay. And, and you know, that's what was just, we see that correlation when I, as I said, when I see that, that starts the that starts to give me and if you're going to be trading it you know an intraday basis and what we can suggest is you know start off with some analysis on the 60 minute chart okay identifying your know, very close recent highs and lows okay and um, you know, what i have is and i think it was vera's question before is vera is interested in uh, you know these boxes that are here okay that uh, there are uh, that are a setup. Now, uh, what what I have those various that is a um, uh, that is a particular indicator for uh, um, for MT4 called I sessions, but I believe it's also available for MT5 as well. And, and all that is is that just effectively it's an indicator you pop in, and you can set your timings so that it actually shades out, okay, or you know shades in uh, particular times and sessions. So um, I invariably when I'm trading US indices, okay, when I'm trading US indices. I have it shaded in to cover both the Asian sessions. So for me in here in the UK, that's coming from about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock night UK time, all the way through to the morning, all the way through the European session up till about one o'clock, okay? One o'clock UK time, <clears throat> excuse me, which will be, you know, um, which is, uh, um, uh, is, is kind of coming to like sort of 7, 8 a.m. in the US, depending on where they are. Uh, uh, and it shades it out, okay. So that actually it kind of focuses my eyes just to look on the the, the charts when um, you know when let's say the US session is in play. Remember what I said right at the start. You know, I've kind of tried to avoid the temptation of trading um, indices outside of their session on an intraday basis, okay. Yes, electronic markets make it possible, but if you're beginning, just just focus on trading during the particular um, session. Okay, keep it keep it simple. Don't you don't need to be a smart aleck at this. Okay, just just keep it nice and uh, nice and simple. <clears throat> so, um, in your here's here's the opposite side. Okay, so uh, these are 15 minute charts here. Okay, on uh, I think namely looking at uh, you know, this is the Dow. 
it's the S&P and the NASDAQ, as you can see it. And this is, you know, what I was saying earlier, I like to see correlations. We saw in a couple of the charts beforehand where they were all moving in unison. But that's not happening here, is it, ladies and gentlemen? All right. OK, the, the Dow, as we've come in into the US session, has, has been collapsing. The, the NASDAQ has actually, you know, has, has been rising and has broken out the kind of the uh, Asian and European session, uh, whilst the S&P has just has literally been going sideways. OK. So, you know, when I when I see that, my natural inclination is to sort of, you know, pull the reins back, okay, pull the reins back. I don't particularly like to, to trade when they're like that. That's not to say there aren't sometimes setups, uh, you know, and if you feel a need to trade because, the, you know, there is a wonder pattern, uh, what I'd be suggesting is to just, you know, just scale back your risk, okay, significantly, all right? So, <clears throat> as I said, some people might differ on that, but personally, I am happier trading US indices on an intraday basis when I see a good correlation, when I see all those algos working in unison. That's that is actually I want I want to ride that, I want to surf that. I don't want to fight that. When I see markets like this, uh, my general usual response is actually is to go and do something else. All right, go go and do something else. You know, it's an afternoon here in the UK. Go out for a walk, do something else because actually. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's something going on here. There's something going on here. Your market is, you know, the market is, something's going on there, okay? Market is a transitioning, market is setting up. There's, you know, there's other pieces of info that I am not, uh, you know, uh, not aware of, okay? And so, you know, my view is it just let the market do its thing. When it's, when it's all, you know, when it's not correlated, go and do something else. Let the market do its thing and come back when it's back stepping unison, okay? That, and that is, you know, that is, that is my, that is the way I look to uh, particularly look to sort of um, to trade those uh, to trade those indices. So, um, um, so uh, Anil said, you know, show us where I'll jump in. Um, I tell you what, Anil, I wouldn't be jumping in any of those markets. All right, I wouldn't be jumping in any of those markets because they're all moving in different directions at different times and paces. Okay, so when I like that, I, I, you know, as I said. Go and do something else. Don't don't try and fight the market. Okay, if you're fighting the market, it's normally a reflection of your ego more so than uh, more so than anything else. So, here you go. Um, but to <laughs> answer your question, um, uh, and I'll, you know what we're looking at here, we're back here on a day when the uh, you know we can see. Hopefully, you can see as the as the as they've entered the U.S. Uh, session. You can probably tell this is when you know the, the U.S. session is open and, and price has dropped. Okay, price has dropped significantly. Okay, price has uh, dropped significantly, uh, and then and then it pulls back. Okay, price pulls back, uh, and what does it do? Okay, in particular, especially on the on the the Dow, which is uh, where my uh, trade was on the S and P, is that as price has pulled back. Okay. Price pulls back to the my blue, so I have um, uh, on my intraday charts I have a 13 EMA, a blue 20 period moving average, a red 50, and a green 200. Price has dropped, price has pulled back, and then I get a price action combination at the 20 period moving average. And price has been in the downtrend. Price has pulled back. Price has pulled back to the 20 period moving average. Price has put in a three bar reversal. You can find that on the uh, uh, webinar archive. And the, the sort of the seller bar is also a, a rejection candle, pin bar, engulfing candle, key reversal candle, right? There is, remember that, there's that confluence of events. And you can see that it's actually all in step, uh, quite happily and sort of stepping in pace together as well. That's, that's what we're looking for, okay? That's it. And that's, yeah, 20 period moving average there, okay? Uh, I particularly like the 20 period moving average there, okay? Um, uh, I think that, you know, when, when the price is given, price is totally there is a downtrend happening there, okay? Price is clearly collapsed. It's tried to pull back. Um, I'm sure if you were to put Fibonacci um, over that move, you'd probably find it's, it's pulled back about 50% of the way. That's that's fine. If you want to use that for your Fibonacci trader, that's absolutely fine. But for me, you know, as I said, price is in step, price has collapsed, price has pulled back, price is at the 20 period moving average, price puts in a three bar reversal, the, the seller bar in itself is in itself a rejection candle. It's a pin bar. It's an engulfing candle. It's a key reversal candle. That you know there there are just there is just lots going on there. Okay, to tell you that that market's pulled back. It's getting ready. Okay, and, and that's that's where I'm shorting. Okay, that's where I'm shorting that uh, that market there, and then letting it and letting it run towards the uh, for the for the rest of the session until it hits my particular uh, targets. So, as I said, you know, um, 
I want to see all the I want to see all these indices working together. Okay, I don't want to fight them. All right, I want to when I see them working units like that, that is when I'm happy. Okay, that is when I'm actually happy is taking my particular trades. All right, that's that's the uh, that's the what I'm particularly looking for. Okay, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and that's that's the way we look to to, to particularly um, to particularly focus in terms of you know in terms of what we're offering. So, um, uh, here's a, here's another example. Okay, is that um, hopefully what you can see there is you know the grey area is the you know is the will be the European sessions come to an end. And then what happens is we have the US session opens. You can see okay the price has risen strongly across all three uh, of the elements across the Dow, across the S and P, and across the Nasdaq. Okay, and then what happens is you know after that big surge move, remember I, I personally my preference. Is to be a mean reversion, okay, a reversal trader, okay. That's my that's my preference, all right. And hopefully, what you can see there is that the Dow prints a, a, a double top after its move, okay. The Nasdaq prints a triple top, and the S and P, okay, presents a, a head and shoulders pattern, which is okay, which is finished with its uh, with an engulfing candle, okay. So here we go which is there okay so basically it puts in okay head and shoulders okay the the nasdaq put uh, sorry the, my apologies the dow puts in a double top the the nasdaq itself puts in another head and shoulders there okay and you know the uh, the the final shoulder the right shoulder is an engulfing candle uh, key reversal candle final shoulder okay so <clears throat> excuse me and then what you're looking to do is to effectively to to trade back down towards the uh, towards the sort of the uh, uh, back towards the range back towards the mean that's the that's the that's the kind of what we're looking for as i said on an intraday trader my preference is okay to basically is to trade mean reversion to trade reversals okay and once again as i said what you see in here is the prices you know those three indices are all moving in uh, unison they're all moving together that's what we're looking to try and uh, achieve okay just to have them move in unison when you're seeing that it's that's what gives me confidence i've got i've got confidence because there is confluence okay you know i've, I've pushed out okay they've ste they're in step unison I'm putting in double tops triple tops I'm also the price action combination is giving me is giving me engulfing candles to give me the final shoulder price is ready to roll over and to sort of trade its way back down towards the uh, back down towards the particular range that's what we're particularly looking at um you know it's kind of in this particular example this is just you know it's it's more it's more um uh, uh more combinations okay that's what um, we were looking at here is that um, what we can see is you can see the range here price drops out of the range until it hits the 200 period moving average and then what it does is it starts to print price action combinations so there are there is a, uh, a rejection candle a nice bullish rejection candle followed by a nice bullish uh, engulfing candle there okay uh, but also what we can see is that you know that that is that's the that's where the action is happening the dow is in charge but we can see we get confirmation on the s p so the s p comes down and puts in rejection candles followed by an engulfing candle right the nasdaq comes down to the 50 and puts in a, uh, a rejection candle before it moves as well so in this particular case what you can see is that you know the, the price is following the dow right you know you can identify or you know work out particularly why you know you can you can fill it out to fill to fill your boots on that okay but what all i'm interested in is that prices you know has moved down to the 200 period moving average it's put in a rejection candle followed by a bullish engulfing candle the s p and the nas are doing the same okay and that is what gives me call i've got once again i've got a confluence of events which is giving me confidence to sort of buy that buy the particular mark buy that us index as it as it kind of moves back in towards the range okay we're getting a, a reversal trade which is also a mean reversion trade in itself um you know and just to, yeah another one or two uh, um another one or two uh, examples here is that uh, what we see is the markets drop in the open all right and then they then they provide a a double bottom uh in unison before moving up all right and as i said double bottoms double tops and um, price as you can see price has been moving down uh, and then what we get is we get a nice w pattern there before price moves up we get another one here on the nasdaq before price moves up uh, as we get a one on the s p before price moves up okay once again all right it's a it's a case of you know they're moving in a unison 
and then what we actually see is that the, the 200 period moving average, which is still very significant, you can see that that is what caps, see how the price, as it runs up to the 200 period moving average, there it basically, it, it, it starts to reject that. That's kind of telling you that, you know, that, that that move is done, all right? That move is done, it's time for you to start getting ready to exit your particular uh, um, position. And you're also, you're coming towards the end of the US session itself, okay? Probably right at the end of the US session. So that, that kind of move is done. But you know the the you know the, as I said the the story I want you to take away the narrative I want you to think about is is that effectively you know those markets once again operating in unison all right providing price action then giving you price action combinations you know got rejection candles engulfing candles chart patterns double bottoms okay price moving up and then seeing a price move capped okay by price action at a uh, two hundred period moving average in that case okay so it's just you know as I say. The market is always communicating to you. The market is always communicating to you. And it's your job to learn, okay, to read what that market is telling you, okay? And I admit that takes a bit of time and experience, but that's what this session is for. To give you just a little bit of an educated introduction, okay, to be able to trade it and be what you're looking for so that you're able to sort of, you know, achieve it with, a, with an element of confidence. So um, final points, I appreciate we're kind of running out of time, is that... Uh, uh, what I suggest is you build a profile for your US indices on your MT4 or MT5 platform and just watch how those markets react on an intraday basis. OK, just watch, you know, and, and ask yourselves these questions, write them down. You know, are those US indices, are they moving in unison, in which case you know, we're interested? Are they moving separately? OK, in which case for me, I'm like now time to step away. Uh, and, you know, questions, how, how does price react? the previous highs and lows okay have a look at that how how does price react to the previous day or previous weeks high and lows okay and 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 does it create an opportunity for you there okay are there is the price action there providing things like reversal patterns price action uh, camel pans that will uh, um that will actually give you that opportunity okay so there's you know this this is your homework okay this is your homework to take away okay uh, vera says uh, you're the best educator and that's very kind of you to say vera very kind of your, your checks in the post right thank you for that um but you know what we're here is and this session is to give you a an educated introduction okay so take away this homework all right take away the homework just looking at set up your mt4 mt5 platform so you've got it set up like there as i said you know put on the moving averages 20 50 200 okay if you can find the uh, i sessions indicator put that in there's also an indicator that will, that will actually print for you the uh, previous day and weeks high and lows okay you can find that on the in the in the universe that is their meta trader and put that on that's what you see probably those little blue lines on my own particular charts and just watch just see how does you know how does uh, how does pricing are they all moving in unison are they actually, you know, how do they react when they hit the previous day's highs or lows? Okay. Does that give you an opportunity? Okay. And I think you watch that enough, you'll start to, you will start to see, okay. And start to recognize some, uh, some fabulous um, opportunities. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, US indices are an exciting asset class to, to trade. However, it's important to be thoroughly prepared and be aware of upcoming news items. Okay. And that is unbelievably true, ladies and gentlemen. All right. My uh, takeaway is with those US indices is, you know, is there a strong correlation? And personally, if there isn't, if they're doing their own things, then I would avoid them, all right? That would be my, you know, that would be my suggestions. Also, is one index in charge, okay? And if it is, follow that one for the session. And you, you know, you, you will see that, you know, you watch this, you know, week after week, session after session, you'll recognize that, okay? And are there any particular static or dynamic levels of support or resistance in play? Static ones, as I said, might be, you know, big round number, previous days or previous weeks, highs or lows. Dynamic levels might well be, you know, moving averages, okay? 20, 50, 200, does the, how does the price react at them? As always, manage risk, okay? That is the key thing, manage risk, okay? And that's it. And, you know, we've got maybe a minute or two, you know, a little bit over, them, but we'll try and have a quick look because I appreciate it's NFP day today. So uh, if you enjoyed that one, don't forget to join us next time. So come and join me on Wednesday. I'm going to talk about the winning and losing stocks from the uh, the pandemic, okay, um, reopening. Who are the winners and losers? Which industries have suffered? Which industries have blossomed? So that will be 2 o'clock London, 7th of July. Okay, check your inbox for the uh, for the webinar link. Uh, and, you know, as uh, as always, OK, if you've uh, got uh, thoughts or comments, you've got questions, you can get in touch with us, email global at admiralmarkets.com, YouTube or on there, Admiral Global, as on Facebook, as on Instagram. So um, 
just uh, bear with us a moment. I literally just um, for uh, one check, just just, uh, just bear with me though for uh, one second. Let's see where we, uh, as we uh, as we try and uh, as we try and do that. Just um, boom. And here we go. <clears throat> so, you know, well, hey, here we go. You know, what we have here today is a stranger because remember, today is a, it's the first Friday of the month, big news day. OK, so we normally would have, um, you know, NFP here, which is what you can see. And if I just go down, if I'm just going to change these charts a little bit, OK, you know, what we can see here is. I'm just going to put those off. So, um, it, you know, it, look at this, look at this, what it is for the today, NFP day. Okay? I think the numbers, I think they just came out before. And I think the numbers were a little bit better. The numbers were a little bit better than had been expected, but, you know, nothing nothing really to get terribly excited about. And in fact, the outright number, I think there was probably changes. But, um, but, you know, what do you see here, ladies and gentlemen, right? You know, we look at here, what you can see is, you know, the, the NASDAQ is the NASDAQ is is going up, isn't it? The, the Dow did go up but has reversed and, and fallen away uh and the the s p well the s p you know is is kind of went sideways and, and is trying to push up again now so there's a there's a difference isn't there they're, they they are they're not really working in unison like like you've seen there okay so you know and, and that's not it, that's not a complete shock okay in terms of uh, uh post nfp but you know uh generally you know as i said you know, when i see markets like this I, I tend to i tend to avoid them okay i like i like you know to you know, I like to, to to trade nice, easy mark where they're all working, you know, in unison together. That's you know, that's the uh, that's the way I particularly prefer to uh, to to operate. Okay, so if I but if I you know if I was to look at this, um, here we go. Is just a case of you know what I'd be interested in here. What was the fact that you know that the 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 Dow when it came up, it kind of double topped there. Hopefully you can see that just to you know having seen it broken out. It double top before it, it fell down and so you're starting to to get interested in that but as i said the nasdaq is going up the s p went up it's gone down it's coming back up again <clears throat> the, the, you know there is there is variation there okay there is variation and, and it's not a surprise on that post nfp so you know uh, my advice today if we were sat here live trading this is you know i, I wouldn't personally be be engaging this because i said I, I want to take easy trades when they're all working together, all moving. Okay, I want to, I want to, I want to surf in 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 waters that I can uh, that I recognise and see what's happening. Not not choppy volatile wars. They're, those are not my particular uh, um, favoured ones to, uh, um, to 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 work with. Exactly, and I'll say I'm going for the low hangle fruits. Okay, uh, I, I, absolutely. That's you know that's it. So uh, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we have run out of time. I've gone over a little bit, and I do apologise. Okay, uh, yeah. as I said, you know, we could talk about this for for uh, for days. Okay, but um, you know, I, I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of an introduction into how you prepare yourself to be trading those uh, U.S. indices. Um, uh, you know, as always, okay. As always, just you know, um, you know, this this video will be, uh, you know, will be on the YouTube channel, okay. And there's plenty in there, so make sure you watch it a couple of times just so you catch all the uh, the nuggets. And if you, as I said, if you're watching this later, and you know, you uh, make sure to uh, subscribe, okay, to the uh, Admiral's YouTube uh, channel. If you found this useful, give it a like, okay. Um, you know, if it's helped us, you know, put it in, give, give some comments, okay. If there's questions, if there's feedback. As I said, you know, really, uh, you know, put them in there. We always, uh, we always really, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Um, so as always, uh, yeah, um, you know, it just, uh, it's for me to end by saying, you know, I, I wish you the very best of success with your own trading endeavors. Uh, I hope you have a fabulous weekend uh, and I look forward to seeing you uh, on the next of the uh, Admiral's Market webinars. Uh, trade well, everybody. Have a, uh, have a great trading, have a great trading next week. <laughs>